Welcome, Forex fans. It's Rob here from Explore Minute here with my tier list for 2024 for the last decade. And I, I did this a while ago. And needless to say, the feedback was, yeah, it was interesting. So I've decided to revisit this and talk about some of the more recent games and how they stack up in the tier now. And then also to, yeah, to address some of the issues that were brought up in the last one, which is some concerns about what, consider, what was considered a Forex game. And I want to talk about what I think is considered a Forex game before I start. So I really like to think of Forex games in the truest sense as being modeled after civilization, right? So what does that mean? That means that if a game doesn't have a randomly generated map, I don't really consider it a Forex game. If it doesn't have dim diplomacy, I don't really consider it a Forex game. And if it doesn't have like expansion in the truest sense, like forming new colonies, forming new cities, I also don't consider that a Forex game. So that precludes games like the Total War series and Heroes of Might and Magic and games like that, because Heroes of Might and Magic, you're not actually expanding in the truest sense. You're just, you know, taking over new, new towns, new cities. And in Total War, the, the map is fixed. So if you look at it that way, then there's a lot of games that you might consider Forex games that aren't going to be on this list. And so that's my definition. Everybody's definition is different. And, you know, it's always a subject of debate, but I'm not going to get into it. Really, other than that, that's that's my that's my definition. If it doesn't fit into your definition, then so be it. You can make your own tier list. But with that being said, let's get started. So first things first, I'm going to go ahead and go in chronological order here, with Millennia being the first one because it's the most recent Forex game. And what do I think about Millennia? Well, I think Millennia fell short, right? I think it had a lot of good ideas, like the age divergences where you can go into like alternate history stuff. And... You know, there was an idea there about allowing your nation identity to become its own unique thing every time the map presented you with different options. And the problem is with that is that you don't get to place your initial city, so you're kind of doomed on RNG regardless, or blessed with RNG. And yeah, beyond that, like it just didn't feel like the the culture skill sets that you choose every couple ages really shifted your identity too much unless you chose like some of the op ones like raiders i remember being a really big one and yeah it's just that you know the the ideas set forth were great the ages like i said the ages divergence thing was really was really cool the culture skill sets were cool but the overall gameplay starts to feel very samey every time you play the game and i'm not a big fan of that because i really like asymmetry in my forex games and i like each game to feel very different so with that, I'm going to place Millennia in the C tier. It could be B, or T, B tier for some people, but you know, if you go to the reviews on Steam for Millennia, I feel like I am, you know, pretty much you know, right there, right? Like I, I feel like a lot of the reviews are good. The reviews about AI forward settling and the AI like spamming cities, those are all pretty accurate. And yeah, I see the AI is terrible. They spam city after city. Yeah, and then just like crappy cities too. And they don't really defend their cities very well. And so I, I'm, I'm with them on those complaints. I really, I think those are valid complaints. And I also truly agree that, you know, the nation identity thing doesn't really fit well. It doesn't really work out well. And so unfortunately, I'm going to place Millennia in the C tier. It could be B tier with some changes, with some, you know, fixes to how you start your nation and how the resources that you are nearby start to shape the identity of the nation that you're creating. But yeah, with, with very bland diplomacy, with that, those systems kind of being lackluster in a lot of ways, a lot of ways, and the age divergent stuff being cool, but not like, not like super cool. I'm going to place it down here, and that seems to be the overall prevailing thought on Steam as well. I put in about 60 hours, and I don't think I'm going to go back. Unless something dramatically changes. So Millennia is in C. Uh, Interstellar Space Genesis, one of the best Forex games out there. One of the best space Forex games, especially one that's modeled after Master Variety 2. I love the remote exploration mechanic because as time goes on, you discover more and more systems that, you know, are really almost next door to you sometimes in your neighborhood. And that really allows the exploration mechanic to continue on much later in the game than most other games. I like the skill trees. I like the new stuff brought on by Natural Law, and it's a very solid 4X game. It's not super unique. It's not super, like, it's not pushing the boundaries too much, but where it does push the boundaries, I think it works really well. 
and the game itself plays out really well. I think that, you know, the fact that colonies are slow to build, but once you get them built up and you start to build mines on gas giants and, you know, uh, accumulate more production and start to really get them going and they start to feel very powerful, that sense of progression feels really good. And the rest of the game is very solid. The combat's very solid and... I have to I have to give it to him. I think the game really works out well, especially for a very small development studio. So I'm gonna go A tier with Interstellar Space Genesis. Great game. Definitely for the price point, I think it's like fifteen dollars a lot of times, like ten dollars even. So and I know that they're working on an expansion again for this this year. And we hope we hope to hear more about that soon. But I think the game is on a you know, it's just a solid, very solid game. It, it, incredibly good entry level 4X game that adds some, you know, new mechanics that they work really well. So and nothing too crazy. It doesn't feel like feature bloat or anything like that. So civilization, or sorry, Galactic Civilizations 4. I think this is the best Galactic Civilizations, right? So I used to think Galactic Civilizations 2 was the best game. But with 4, I think the home world and colony dynamic really works out well. So if you don't know what it is, it's basically that you can choose certain planets to be your home worlds. And those are the ones that you develop manually and place buildings on and really start to work with the symmetry with the the buildings that you build and gaining bonuses from adjacency and stuff like that and then you allow those colonies that you don't that you also colonize but you don't really manage to contribute to those home worlds and it really really cuts down on micromanagement and the rest of the systems are pretty great like the ethics system i think it's ethics or something like that basically you can choose like your like your focus like what kind of people you are and those give you some good bonuses the combat with the warlords expansion has been really awesome with the the war doctrines and stuff like that and the diplomacy is pretty good too it's solid the models the character models for the diplomacy system are like really awesome and really add to the immersion and some of the flavor text really adds to the immersion and the game just feels great the only thing i don't like about the game is the sectors i don't really play with them I don't like a game that big, and I wish they'd stuck with something maybe a little less overwhelming. And I start to feel like there is a lot of micromanagement when you do add more than one sector. So, and then of course too, there's like bugs and some inconsistencies that I, you know, kind of drive me wild a little bit. And that being said, I think it's their best game since Fallen Enchantress Legendary Heroes. It's definitely the best Galactic Civilizations game, and it's it's really solid. And I think that most people would enjoy themselves with it. And it's sitting at an 82% on Steam, which is a pretty high percentage for a Forex game. So, And I think it's well-deserved. So we're going to go ahead and place that in the A tier. I think it's a great game. Easily one of the best Stardock games and easily the best Galactic Civilizations game. Next up is Old World. And Old World is one of the best Forex games of all time, in my opinion. So I really think the character development stuff, the like character lines, character trees, all that stuff like this, the character traits, the role-playing elements of this game really add to the 4x game and i also like that the time frame is limited because i think with all those characters it would start to feel a bit strange as you would like go through time like a, a traditional civilization game so the focus on a particular time frame works out really well for this game and like i said the character the like interactions with the characters and the way that you can develop your characters and develop your your bloodline and stuff like that really kind of put crusader kings in a civilization game in a 4x game and it works well, and I think it it really does work best because of its limited time frame and the the battle system is great, the like just basically everything. I really like this game. I think it's one of the best forex games out there, and easily a game that I would recommend to anybody. So I'm gonna put this up at the S tier. Next up is Revival Recolonization. So it's a great game in some regards. I think the setting is fantastic. The post apocalyptic stuff is great. The rebuilding Earth, you know, after it's been destroyed by alien or sorry, robots, I should say, and it, it really it really works out well. And some of the stuff learned here clearly is from Endless Legend. And, you know, the only thing holding it back is, I think, just more asymmetry, like the emissaries, which are the leaders for each of the like the factions you can choose. Well, actually, you just you choose an emissary and then that emissary chooses which faction it chooses, which you know, which kind of tribe, I think the emissaries could use some more asymmetry. And without that asymmetry, I feel like the game starts to feel very similar through playthroughs. And, you know, the setting's fantastic. The combat's pretty great. It's quick, a lot like Fallen Enchantress Legendary Heroes. But the, yeah, it's just, 
there's something just not there yet. And I think it's, I think it's the faction asymmetry, the emissary asymmetry, like the fact that each game plays this and feels the same as it, as you go through each of it. I think that really kind of pulls away from it. It draws away from the game. I wish there was more in the in the way of like some tech tree divergence as well. But it's a solid game, and for the price point, it's like thirty dollars. I think it's actually really good, and I'd like to see it further developed. And I'm I'm hoping to see the game continue to be supported, and hopefully it sold well enough. I don't know that it did. But it's also sitting around 80% on Steam as well, which is pretty high for a Forex game. But that's also because there haven't been many reviews, haven't been many players. But it's a solid game. And I think that the post-apocalyptic setting hasn't been used well enough or used enough. So I'm hoping to see more support for this game and you know, maybe even an expansion or something. So we're going to place this right there in the middle. I think it's not bad. It's not great. It's a good, it's a solid start. And I'm hoping to see, you know, Herocraft, I think it's Herocraft. Uh, I, I think it is. Develop this further. Because I think that there could be something pretty special here if they, they really worked on it. You know, some UI improvements, stuff like that. But mostly asymmetry with the emissaries and allowing each playthrough to feel a bit more unique would be a, a big thing for me. Dominus Galaxia. So the game isn't really quite complete. Uh, you can play a pretty complete version of it. And I think it's probably the best Master of Ryan 1 attempt since Master of Ryan 1. The problem is that Remnants of the Precursors is free. So if you like Master of Ryan 1, then Remnants of the Precursors is a free game that you can get from Ray Fowler. And it does it really well. But Dominus Galaxia does some new things with you know like the ship development and stuff like that and i think it could be a great game the problem is is that the development is extraordinarily slow on it and you know i, I don't normally want to keep games in here that aren't complete but i do want to give a shout out to this game because i think that with the right development time and the you know the, yeah like the execution of the game the actual follow through and completion of this game it could be pretty good so we're going to leave it here in B because I think the underlying mechanics are very good. They're very solid. The game looks good for a like very small team. And I think, like I said, the, the additions to the formula are actually pretty solid. I just hope to see more and I want to see it develop more. I mean, right now it's pretty much a complete game in that it, you can play a game through. And, you know, if you don't mind missing assets and stuff like that, then it wouldn't be that big of a deal. But... Yeah, I think that with some time, Dominus Galaxia could easily be A or S tier, depending on how depending on how further along they get through and how much more time they develop it with. I think it's close. I think it's close to being something really good. Pax Nova. So, well, huh, this is a this is a very simplified version of like something like Emperor of the Fading Suns, where you can both play the forex game in space and on land, and it did a lot of things well, right? Like I enjoyed the the progression from land, you know, terrestrial forex to space forex, and then also like then later on doing kind of both. And I think that the the town development and stuff like that was actually pretty good. That you could, you know, there were some synergies there that you could really work with. And again, my issue comes back to the asymmetry of factions. The games factions don't feel terribly different from one another, so it starts to feel like the same game over and over again. And I think that the the team behind it, Grey Wolf, I think I don't remember what they changed their name to, but they 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 had a lot of good ideas. They just never really followed through with any of them. And I wish this game had been better. I wish this game this game could have been really good. It it's good for 40, 50 hours and then it starts to really drop off, a lot like Millennia. So that's where it's gonna go on the C tier here. Lord of Rigel. So Lord of Rigel is basically a Master of Ryan 2 clone in almost every sense of the matter. It looks really good. It plays decently. It's really got the same issues as I've mentioned before with a lack of asymmetry. I mean, even more so in this one, it stays very true to the Master of Ryan 2 formula. And it just feels like a very decent looking Master of Ryan 2 game with support that just isn't there. Like the development is extraordinarily slow in this game. And yeah, I don't really see any reason to play it if you already have like a interstellar space genesis out there which you do and you know despite the graphics being great i don't really like the real-time strategy co uh, combat i think that that's uh, a negative in my opinion it just doesn't really feel tactical it just sort of feels like throwing blobs at one another and 
yeah, with the development being so slow and really, I don't think they're at version 1.0 either. So a game that I'm throwing in here that's not quite done yet, but I still see that it's not going to probably make much of a difference between now and version 1.0. So I'm going to leave it down here on the D tier. Unfortunately, it's going to be my first D tier game. Just really not doing it for me, especially with games like Interstellar Space Genesis out there and even the original Master Variant 2. You know, it's not really doing anything unique or new other than a facelift. And even that facelift isn't like extraordinary. So, yeah, unfortunately, it's going to stay down here on the D tier. Pegasus Expedition is like a 4X, like a story based 4X game. It's unique in that it does that. I've never seen a 4X like story game. And they do have some modes where you can play in a sandbox and stuff like that. The problem is with the combat is that it's a little bit obtuse. There's not really an understanding of it that, that really makes sense to me. And, you know, the, the story-based portion of the game is definitely where the uniqueness lies. And so if you wanted something more in, in the, the likes of a true 4X game, then I would probably steer clear of that. So... Otherwise, if you stayed it, if you tried it out for its story mode, I think that it's actually pretty good. And I'll leave it there in the C tier because it's tried some unique things. I think the story stuff was really, really good. And, you know, it, it drew me in long enough to play it through, but then I never really returned to it. So unique for that matter. Definitely not bad. Definitely not good or great. It's there and it's, you know, on a sale, I definitely recommend it. Shadow Empire. So Shadow Empire has kind of taken the Forex gaming world by storm just because of how deep it can be. There is an exceptionally like large variety of planets that you can colonize and, you know, basically work against and all this other stuff that really just works out real well for the game. And, you know, I, the, the, there's just so much to it. It's, it's definitely hard to get into, right? It's one of the hardest Forex games I've ever had to really figure out and you know there's like uh, supply line stuff and combat you know uh details and and just there's so many things about this game that make it very hard to get into but i think once you get into it it's easily one of the best forex games out there and i i almost want to take points off of it for how hard it is to get into but i think that a lot of Forex players, a lot of Forex gamers are going to enjoy that level of time commitment required to really understand this kind of game. And that is a big plus for a lot of people. So, and, and once you do, I think the reward is there for sure. The graphics are awful, of course. And that is unfortunate because I think that, you know, a game like that deserves some pretty good graphics, but there have been some upgrades to that, like character portraits, and there are some mods to it that help the the game look better with better splash screens and stuff like that and yeah i think that still it's one of the best forex games of all time so we're going to go ahead and place it up here in the s tier i think a lot of people will agree with that and once you get into it and once you really figure this game out i think you're going to be pretty damn excited for it and and really into it so shadow empire s tier master of ryan conquer the stars so this game is one of the easiest games to recommend for someone who wants to just try to figure out Space Forex games because it's pretty simple. The production quality is up there. It's like really high. And the gameplay me mechanics themselves feel pretty easy to figure out. It's basically just a dumbed down Massive Ryan 2 in my opinion. But also it takes a lot of Massive Ryan 2's gameplay mechanics and really just throws them into a better looking game. So... Again, you know, you go back to Lord of Rigel where it's it's really competing with its, you know, its main rival is Master of Ryan, Conquer the Stars, and Interstellar Space Genesis. And it doesn't do anything better than either of these two games. I think it's actually not as good as Interstellar Space Genesis just because of the gameplay. But production-wise, it's really good. If you're looking for a really good entry-level Space Forex game, I think Master of Ryan, Conquer the Stars is it, especially since it can be found really cheap. So I'm going to put this here right in the middle. I think it's a really good game for what it is, but it could have been way better. And yeah, unfortunately, Wargaming just gave up on it afterwards. So <laughs> we're not going to see any more of that, but very good, exceptionally good starter game. And it's one of the easiest games for me to recommend for people trying to get into the Space Forex genre. So Age of Wonders, well, Age of Wonders Planetfall. So 
the H O Hunter series is unique in that it like kind of started off as more of a like Heroes of Might and Magic clone and quickly became more of a Forex game with very deep and lengthy tactical battles. And that's where I have an issue with it because I feel like the tactical battles take away from the actual Forex nature of the game. But the synergies with the different uh, classes and I forgot what they call them, but they're basically like races and like classes for the class, races. They are exceptional. And I think once you get into that, if you really want something that's very deep and you want to figure out like how to really synergize different skill sets and different races and stuff like that, and you like a really good looking game with a lot of good tactical battles, then Age of Wonders Planetfall is definitely for you. And yeah, I, I think that in a lot of ways, Age of Wonders 4 was a step back in some regards with the depth and the synergies that I just spoke about. And I do miss like the the actual like identity of races in this game. But yeah, it's it's an exceptionally good game. And I think that Planetfall, if you're looking for something different, science fiction, terrestrial, and you know, good combat, then you are in luck here with Age of Wonders Planetfall. So I'm gonna place it here in the A tier because I think really honestly it's one of the better 4X games out there. And I really enjoy its tactical battles and you know the games take forever I'm not gonna lie and the tech trees and the skill set trees and all the stuff there's just so much that it really has it requires a lot of your time to figure out but if you can figure it out and you can really take the time you need to do that then you're going to enjoy yourself with planetfall humankind so amplitude studios attempt at taking civilization on fell short in a lot of ways. I think there was a lot of issues. Their tactical battles are fantastic. I think their tactical battles are easily a standout, but the rest of the game, especially with the culture changes, you know, choosing your culture at every age really rub people the wrong way. I mean, you can go from being Japanese in one era to like Germans and like your entire civilization changes its look. And it's a bit jarring for a lot of people. I think that the ideas were good. The game is exceptionally beautiful, but the gameplay itself is a bit shallow and it just fell short in a lot of ways. And I'm, I'm sorry to say that because I really like Amplitude Studios, I, you know, like their ideas. And one of the, my favorite games of all time is Endless Legend. So Humankind is going to actually come down to C tier. And I'm saying that because, you know what? I can't, hmm. I, yeah, I'm going to leave it at C tier because I think that, unfortunately, it just fell short in a way that, that make me... I, I've never gone back to it. I played it after its first expansion. It's only expansion. And I never went back because I just felt like the the gameplay just wasn't as deep as I'd wanted it to be. And again, I'm just I think I'm burnt out on like the test of time, the, the you know the whole like historical based standing the test of time kind of forex game. And humankind didn't bring enough new to the table. And it, and, and where it did, it kind of fell short. The combat's fantastic, but the rest of it kind of just felt meh. So it's going to stay C tier for me. Sorry, Amplitude. At the gates, easily a D, but I will tell you that some of the things that John Schaefer was doing was really fantastic. You know, the idea of like having, you know, basically it was a lot of colonization and that you train your units to, to exploit particular resources. And it, it would have worked had you stuck with it. It was some really good ideas here. And Unfortunately, they, they they didn't come through. So he also abandoned it, and I think this he's had some issues since. So unfortunately, at the gates down here, D could have been a B or A tier if A tier if he'd actually stuck with it. Really good ideas there, with like the like like I said, the exploitation, like supply chains and stuff like that. But it all fell fell apart. So he never finished it. Civilization Six. I mean, I'd be remiss if I placed it anywhere down here because I know a lot of people would be mad at me. I'm going to place it A tier only because I know that the game has a lot of value in it, and it's not my favorite. I would put it down here personally. You know, this is a personal list. I'm going to put it down at B tier. I think it's the worst Civilization game, honestly. And I don't really like the district system. I don't like the cartoony graphic style. I felt like the game started to feel way bloated after the first expansion and. I, I really wanted to like it because, again, you know, I really wanted a game that felt... That I, I wanted a game that felt unique and a, like a game that that took the Civilization formula and made it feel more fun. And instead, I think it made it feel more grindy. And, you know, the game requires you to think hundreds of turns ahead. And I just... I'm not a big fan of that. 
it's a it's a good game for what it is like it's fun to play a few times and i know a lot of people out there are going to be like what the hell like how could you possibly say it's b tier i just think that you know coming off civilization 4 and then even civilization 5 which i think is a better game than civilization 6 i think that it just didn't meet the expectations i had for it and i really haven't played that much and that's uh that's a testament to what i think of it because the other five Civilization games I've played for hundreds of hours, where I think I played a hundred hours of Civilization VI. So your mileage may vary here. You might enjoy Civilization VI significantly more than I did, and I know there's a lot of people out there that did, but for me, it just fell short, and I haven't really returned to it in quite some time. Distant Worlds 2. So another game that I felt like really just, it tripped. It tripped hard as it released, and it's been working really hard to overcome that trip. And I think that the problem with my my relationship with it has been hit or miss and mostly miss because I feel like I don't really know why the change to 3D was made other than to maybe make... I don't even know. I don't know. I think that the 2D stuff was easier. I think Distant Worlds 1 is still a better game. And Distant Worlds 2 just feels like it. it's just, it's just very dreary. Like, there's something about playing Distant Worlds 2 that makes me feel like I'm working. And I don't like that. And I I like that there's still that, like, extensive resource system. And you still have to really, you know, make your empire wide in order to accumulate as much resources as you can to start developing some of these res uh, some of these technologies and some of the later ships and stuff like that. And I love the sense of discovery you can find with, you know, finding abandoned ships and going out there and defeating space monsters and stuff like that. But... As it stands, it just doesn't feel like a game that's better than its predecessor still. And I'm hoping to see that change with the Rise of the Shakturi expansion. But I just don't have much faith in it just yet. I think it's still a really good game for the right person. But I still think it's a C-tier game. And I might get mad. People might get mad at me for that. And I'm sorry. But I just don't really enjoy it. I don't enjoy it like I should. And I think, unfortunately, that is a result of, of a failed not failed, a botched launch and a lot of bad decisions with regards to its design because I feel like it could have probably stuck more close to its original formula with a, a more, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't, it's, it's hard to explain. I just think the game feels really dreary. I feel like the game just feels like it's a lot of work and I don't really feel like there's much payoff for that work. And so... For me, Distant Worlds 2 is a C-tier game. I could see it going up to B and A, but I mean, I, at one point we th we said Distant Worlds 1 was the best game of all time for Forex games, and I don't disagree with that. Still, I think that there might be better Forex games for me, but I think that because it fell so short of the expectations and it still doesn't feel like a game that rises to the challenge that Distant Worlds 1 set for it, that it's still it's and it's 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 really worthy of anything higher than a C, maybe B for some people. And I'm sure some people will say it's an S tier, but I don't really believe that at all. So yeah, Distant Worlds 2 could be something. We'll certainly keep an eye on it, but for me it's just it's too dreary, it's too much work, it kind of feels boring, and I hate to say that. Sorry. Dune Spice Wars. Let's say that again. Dune Spice Wars. It's a Forex game. In the truest sense, I think the real time works against it, in my opinion. And it feels very much like Shiro Games' other game. I forgot what it's called right now. But it's it's unique enough. I think it's fun in that it's like fast-paced and you can play a game in a few hours. And the Dune you know, universe is fun. But I think still that the real time strategy works against it. And I'm not a real big real time strategy game fan. But the the universe itself is unique in that it, you know, like not many Forex games have been set in the Dune universe. And I like the, I like these faction asymmetry a bit. Like there's a bit asymmetry there that, that works well for it, but I just, I haven't been able to get into it. And so I can't really speak to it as much as I would like to with the other games. A lot of the other games I've played pretty extensively. Dune Spice Wars, I haven't, but I think that there's an understanding there that it's actually pretty good. And that, you know, if you want to get into the like the nuts and bolts of it i think that you can start to feel like like this game could be fun if it started to do some things differently but i still think as a base game as a game it is right now it's a lot of fun i don't like the real-time strategy i like the, the 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 pace of it 
and that it's a three or four hour game, like I said. But yeah, I just I'm not really feeling it. So it's just it's gonna sit C tier. And I again, maybe I'm wrong here. So let me know. Let me know what you think. So Stars and Shadow, it's another Massive Ryan 2 clone of sorts. It's very fast paced. It can be played in like a few hours tops. And I actually really like the faction asymmetry here. I just feel like it, it's still not there. And I knew that they were working on an expansion there for a while. And I think that they stopped doing that because of sales or maybe just no time. But unfortunately, I think the game fell short in a lot of ways. It's a game that could have been really good. I love the art style. The art style is, art style is very unique, but it's not, it's not enough to keep it going. There's some asymmetry there with the factions, like I said. The combat is great. And the colony development stuff is really fun too. And that you have like limited slots and you have to really consider what you're going to do with that. But the AI is ruthless and it just feels like it's constantly betraying you, which I guess that's maybe realistic or not. I don't know. But it's not fun. I'm going to leave it in C tier as well. It could have been really good. Unfortunately, it wasn't quite good enough. And the art style wasn't enough. It, if, I feel like if it just had a, another year of support, it could have been B or A tier, but it just never got there. So Stellar Sovereigns, I don't really know too much about. I know that if you're a Sword of the Empire, or sorry, Sword of the Stars one player, you're going to enjoy it. Some of the guys here on the Explominate uh, Discord and through the group really like it. I'm just going to leave it B. I don't have much to say about it. Honestly, I'm leaving it B to give it the benefit of the doubt because I haven't played it much myself, but I know that people have been enjoying it. I almost feel like that's giving it too much credit. I'll leave it at B. And people are more than welcome to prove me right or wrong on that one because I feel like I haven't played it enough. I don't want to speak to it because yeah, it's, there, there's two games, actually three games here that I have not played enough of to really give an educated opinion on. It's Stellar Sovereigns, Dune, Spice Wars, and Drax. So those are the three games that I'm really not going to be able to speak too much on. In fact, I'm just going to go ahead and leave it at C now that I think about it, just to kind of feel fair. I didn't really talk about it. I don't really know much about it. Feel free to argue against my rating because I don't... I almost feel like I should just leave it down here. Maybe I should. Maybe I should just leave these down here. I'll leave them down here. I feel like that's fair, right? Let's go back to Master Magic. So Master Magic Reboot by Muha Games. Well, it also fell short for me. And it just felt like it didn't take any of the innovations found in the last 20 years and implemented any of them. The city spam is out of control, in my opinion. The game is very slow. I just, I really don't enjoy Master Magic. I really don't. And Muha has moved on and Slytherin has taken over. And I think that what happened was that they stuck way too true to the original formula for the game to be any fun. And I have played like 60 hours and I will never return probably. I just did not enjoy it. I'm going to leave it at C because I think it's better than these two games, but barely. And that's my personal opinion. And I know a lot of people will say that I don't know how to play or get good or all that stuff, but I just really didn't enjoy it that much. And I don't see myself ever returning to the game. I think there are other Forex games, fantasy Forex games that have done that formula way better. And I would play those over that game any, any day. So C tier. Yeah, with the, the the pace of the game, the the like lack of excitement, I just really don't enjoy Master Magic. I I didn't I I enjoyed the original, but I didn't enjoy anything about this reboot. I just felt like it stayed way too close to its formula. So, Drax, we're gonna leave out here because of course I don't know the game, but you know, check it out. I guess Sins of a Solar Empire Two. I know it's not quite out yet, but I have been playing it pretty extensively, and I'm gonna say it's actually real close to an A tier game. It does everything Sense of a Solar Empire 1 did, only better. And it's added some pretty cool stuff, pretty cool new stuff, like some uh, minor faction stuff and a bunch of other you know, new technologies, just a variety of new stuff. So if you like Sense of a Solar Empire 1, you're going to like Sense of a Solar Empire 2. I still wish there was more 4X elements. And I think that, of course, with the 4X mod, E4X mod, I think that's what it was, for Sense of a Solar 1, if you started to add something like that to a Sense of a Solar Empire 2, you'd really just enjoy the crap out of this game. But for what it is, I think it's a great game. I cannot believe IGN gave it like a 4 out of 10 or a 5 out of 10 or a 6. Whatever ridiculous rating it gave, it's just way better than that. And I think with some time, it could be way better than even... It could even reach S tier. It depends. I think it, there's this... It's taken the formula of Sins of a Solar Empire 1, added to it, made it more fun, made it better looking, and 
you know, hopefully in the final stretch here, it'll become, you know, I'm going to leave it a B actually because it's not out yet, but I'm, I'm going to assume it'll reach A tier once it comes out because we don't even have the Vasari out yet. I think it's the Vasari, one of the factions that aren't out yet. And I think without them, it's just not fair to, to properly assess the game. But I think it's very capable of being an A tier game, even S tier with some time, just like Sins of a Solar Empire 1 was. So yeah, if you like Sins of Solar Empire 1, I think Sins of a Solar Empire 2 is better in every way, even if it's incrementally in some places, but in some places it's actually just significantly better. So give it a shot. Keep an eye on it. It should be out here in just a little bit. So Endless Legend, it's no surprise. It's an S tier game for me. I know that the game can be slow, but the faction asymmetry is literally like just mind-numbingly awesome. It changes the genre for me. The the variety of different factions, the way they all play differently, the fact that there's like a, a unique focus for each faction and there's a unique storyline and all this other stuff, it really floats my boat. I really like this game. I can't wait for, you know, a, a potential Endless Legend 2 because I think that if they took the same ideas of having asymmetric factions and then maybe added the combat from humankind and really leaned into its role-playing and story elements, I really think that Endless Legend 2 could be one of the best games of all time. So Endless Legend is a fantastic game. It's what got me back into Forex games. It's what started this whole project. Explominate started because of Endless Legend. So it's going to remain S tier for my whole life. It doesn't matter if it, it stands the test of time or not. It got me back into the genre. It got me doing Explominate. So it'll be there. There, the end. Endless Space 2. Way better than Endless Space 1. I still think it's a fantastic game. I think that the asymmetry is there. The new patches that they just released even these last couple months and years have really improved the expansions that were made or that were created by, by third-party studios and has fixed some of the issues. I think it's fantastic. I think it's a great game. I created The Unfallen in a, in a faction creation contest through Ampo2 Studios. I was the one that created The Unfallen, and it was really cool to see the faction that I created in the game and become you know synonymous with some memes and i think with the the asymmetry the the planet development the exploration mechanics you know the diplomacy all of it it's just it's a fun game it's a really good game it's easily one of the best forex games of all time in my opinion and i'll put it a i know some people will probably put it down closer to b or c and maybe even some people put it s tier but i think it's a solid a and i think that the game will certainly stand the test of time better than most other forex games and it's easily one of the best space forex games out there so if you enjoy space forex games with asymmetry and man you can get this game really cheaply nowadays i think that it's great the production values are out of control and you know the only thing that really is a big drawback is the combat i wish i had more control over combat i think endless space, endless space 3 really needs to have a revised or even completely just thrown out combat system just throw the whole thing out and redo it Give us more control over that stuff because I think that's what we want. You know, something a little bit more akin to Endless Legends combat, Endless Legend, maybe even more like humankind, like having like a combat system, sort of like Domus Galaxia, where you have ships on a hexagonal map and hexagonal map and you, yeah, you move them around. I, I just much rather like a fast paced tactical system than what's been given to us these past, you know, Endless Legend one, or sorry, Endless Space one, and Endless Space two. So give us something more. But otherwise, Endless Space 3 is something that I'm really excited about if it ever comes out. Hopefully it does. But Endless Space 2 is very good. It's A tier for sure. Age of Wonders 4. So this game has gone back and forth with me. I, I've been going back and forth between A and, and B tier for me. I think with the latest expansion, Eldritch Realms, and the latest Mystic patch, I think that it really came to its A tier at this point. There's a lot of really great stuff. It's taken a lot of the cool stuff from Solaris and Faction Creation and... The culture stuff and everything that's that's going there with the forms that just it, there's a, so many varieties of, of different races you can choose and create and they've started to actually make them feel very unique with the, the mystic update and i think that's important i think they really need to lean into that because if you can start to really lean into the asymmetry with the cultures and make them each feel unique to the player and unique for each playthrough then you're going to have a really good system and a really good game and I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt. I think the trajectory is absolutely on the way up. And I think Age of Wonders 4 could easily be Triumph Studios' best game. If not, if it's not already. But it's it's up there. It's really good. I think that, like I said, the, the momentum they have right now with the Mystic update and the latest Eldritch Realms expansion, it really starts to feel like this could be a, a really, really standout 4X game that, that will, you know, it'll 
maybe even develop, you know, redefine the genre in some ways. And I think that's really important. I'm giving it a lot of praise because I think this last expansion was was a knockout. It was just really bun like the Mystic patch and the the expansion. I really think did it really well. So I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt here because I, I I really toyed with a B tier, but A tier for now. We'll come back in a couple years and see where it ends up landing. Zephon, I know this game's not out yet, but we've had a very long time with it with the the demos that came out and the last demo, demo seven or demo eight or whatever is basically the finished game. Like other than having a couple tiers of technology left and the last few leaders, I have not spent this much time with a demo in probably my entire life. I have loved every second of Zephon and the the addition of diplomacy, the the combat pace, the even the new voiceovers, like all of it just feels very immersive. I really like where this is going. It's a really fun pick up and play game. Like you can just pick it up, play it for a few turns, have some great combat you know, some, you know, utilize some great t combat tactics and stuff like that and enjoy it for like half an hour and then put it down or enjoy it for two hours. It's a game that really takes the best of Gladius, which we're going to talk about here in a little bit and adds what I think is like almost like some Beyond Earth or Alpha Centauri vibes with the the personalities that the the leaders have. I think that they need to lean into some more asymmetry there too. And I think that having some unique like a unique unit per faction or per leader would really go a long way towards that. And I think that the, if you guys haven't listened, we had a podcast interview with them. They were talking about having like natural wonders that you can find later. Uh, that would be something that they might add later, like natural wonders that have been like kind of destroyed by the, the apocalypse that, that occurred on earth and stuff like that. Those are the kind of things that I would really like to see to make the game really high tier. I think, I'm going to leave it at B tier for now because I think that it's not fair to say it's A tier just yet because I think that it could very well be A tier at version 1.0. But there's still, you know, of course, the tech trees that are missing or the tech levels that are missing and the few leaders. And I think they really need to lean in on that asymmetry to make it an A tier. And if they can make it an A tier game with the asymmetry and the unique leaders and stuff like that, I think easily with the stuff they were talking about in the podcast you know, adding some more immersive, you know, immersion factors, some more flavor to the universe or more flavor to the earth, the post-apocalyptic earth they've created that could really make it an S tier game. And I'm serious. I think it could be an S tier game. So one day, I believe very soon it'll be a tier and it could very well be S tier. We're going to leave it at B tier for what it is right now, but man, I'm, I'm really hopeful for Zephon. It's one of the most exciting games for me. Stellaris. Well, Stellaris in its last expansion actually kind of uh it, it really elevated itself for me solaris is a game that i actually have the most hours in right now for any forex game and i've i've gone back to it time and time again and i do enjoy a game of it here and there and i think that with the systems that they've recently placed in there and with just the, the new expansions like that they're this new expansion really helped me feel like maybe they might be headed in the right direction there's a lot of great changes in it and Stellaris is really honestly one of the best Forex games out there for many reasons because there's it's just the largest reaching one. And I think that a lot of the systems in place are really good. There are times where I feel like it's still boring and I feel like there's a lot of downtime, but I still think that there are so many systems in place which are overwhelming in my opinion too. I think unfortunately the best of Stellaris is hidden behind some skill walls and some like time with the game walls because if you don't have a lot of time with this game you're not going to understand some of the mechanics that are in there and i think that it could be an s tier game one day i still think people will think it's an s tier game it's an a tier game for me and i think that it's an a tier game because of how well developed it is how much they've supported it and because i think that it's one of it is one of the biggest forex games out there but Needless to say, I think there's a lot of things that are going well with it too. I think the trajectory for it is also on the up and up, which is insane because I think it was starting to head down there, especially like last year. But this last expansion and the last content stuff and all that, the new patches and stuff really seem to be taking it in a better direction. And as Solaris is, I mean, it's a mainstay. It's huge. There's a lot of players for Solaris and it's one of, if not, if not the, it's one of Paradox's biggest games. So... I'm excited to see where that develops. I'm excited to see where this new team takes it, and we'll see where that goes. Gladius. So Gladius is Proxy Studio's former game. It's easy A tier. It could be S tier for some people. I I like the Warhammer 40k universe, but I don't love it. 
and the combat is second to none, right? Like the combat tactics, the asymmetry with the factions. I'm a big asymmetry guy, as you can tell. The asymmetry with the factions is is it feels right. It's really great. And I think that if you're looking for a combat focused forex game that does combat exceptionally well, you could not go wrong with Gladius. And especially if you like the Warhammer 40k universe, I'm not as big of a fan of the universe as some people are. I think it's a cool universe, but it doesn't like really get me going. And I think that Gladius is the better game right now than Zephon. Like as we are talking on, you know, in June of 2024, but I think Zephon could actually supersede Gladius with its unique setting and its unique leaders and stuff like that, assuming they can lean into the asymmetry that they found here in Gladius. So really close there. I think Gladius is definitely the better game right now, especially with how many DLCs it has and all this other stuff that you can add to it. And the like really, really hard lean into asymmetry. I think we're, we're talking about the better game here is Gladius. And yeah, so if you like that kind of stuff, if you like that, like the combat stuff, Gladius is definitely, and it's another game too, where you can pick up and play, right? You can just do like 30 minute intervals, 20 minute intervals, two hour intervals, depending on what you're feeling. So, and there's some great mods too, that help the, the graphics look a little bit better that help with the, the size of the units and stuff like that, that really add to the immersion in that game too. So, all right, last but not least, Imperium Greek Wars. I'm going to place this as an A tier game as well. So actually, I'm going to go, oh, this one's a hard one for me. There's a lot of great things here, like the trade system in here, the diplomacy system is fantastic. There's a lot of re really unique ideas here that have been implemented very well. It feels very board gamey. Like we interviewed the developer a long time ago and he said that he has his roots in board games. And you can tell that because the systems in place are fantastic. Like I said, the, tra the trade stuff is really awesome. The diplomacy stuff is really awesome. And the, like, the progression through a very limited skill tree is also pretty cool too. But I think the fact that it's stuck in just these, you know, this, this time frame actually works against it because I think that it's, a, in my opinion, personally, very much my opinion, I think this time frame is just a little bit more, it's just not as fun. And without the like hard lean into the characters like Old World did, I think that, you know, the, the gameplay systems are great. And like I said, there's a, there's a very, well, so there's like, you have to be very careful with how you play Greek Wars. Like you don't, you can't approach it the way you'd approach most other Forex games. And if you do, you're not going to do well. And so I think that that element makes it also unique for some people and you can find it pretty cheap. So if it's something that you want to check out and see how unique it is or how different it is than the average Forex game, then you could find it for like, you know, I don't know, very cheap. And so, and, but it's also a game too, that you're going to have a learning curve with because it is unique to the genre and it's, it's not something that's, that's doing things the way other games are doing. So that's, that's important, right? I think that a lot of people want something unique and you're going to find that with Imperium's Greek Wars and the mechanics themselves are great. I'm taking points off for the graphics because the display, the, the, the graphics themselves are just atrocious in my opinion. And the, you know, like the maps themselves look pretty gross too. I just, I, I'm not trying to take off too much for that because I understand they're a very small group too. And I just think like you have games like that with a small group, but then you have Zephon with a small group and Zephon looks amazing. So yeah, there's, there's a little bit of, you know, disparity there between the two games and they're very similar. They're, they're in a very similar like development group size category and Zephon will easily be an A or an S tier eventually. So, you know, I, I think that that the, the presentation of the game really draws away from the game in a way that like I would take, I actually will take points off of it for it because it's not that great. So, but the game silly systems, if that's all you care about and you don't care about graphics or if you're running on a potato, then so be it. Then Imperium Greek, Imperium's Greek Wars is a great game and it could easily be A tier for some people, maybe even S tier. I know a lot of people like really think it's one of the best Forex games out there. So anyway, that's all I've got for now. So of course I want to come back down to these. I, doing Spice Wars, I still think could be like a B or C tier. Or, or, one, I don't know. I haven't played it enough. So I don't want to say, like I don't want to give it a definitive, you know, rating here. Drax, I just don't know much about. I know that it's out there. I know it's developed by like one guy. The, the presentation there is pretty bad too. But the hand-drawn art is pretty cool in like an 80s cartoon style. But the like the actual map graphics are pretty bad. And again, I, I'm not trying to take away from a very small studio, a one-person studio in this case, I think. But, you know, it's, it's hard to look at, so it's hard to get into. But 
these three games are not games that I'm super familiar with. I don't want to put them in a tier when I don't really have anything. Like I would just they're gonna be here in the miscellaneous tier, the un untiered tier, because of how little I have time with them and how you know, I just don't want to rate them based on I mean, I think I have like four hours of stellar, and I think I maybe have like ten with Dune. And I have like one with Drax. So I, I don't the other games I've have at least forty hours with, you know, at the very minimum. Some sometimes way more than that. So I feel like I can give my own personal rating to those games. That being said, I'm eager to hear what you guys have to say because I'm sure a lot of you are going to disagree with everything I've ever said. And again, these are all personal opinions. These are games that I've had a lot of experience with. I'm rating them based on that experience. Again, there are some games here that could easily move up. I think Dominus Galaxia could move up if they actually start developing it correctly. Zephon could easily be S tier. I really believe that. I really, really, truly believe that Zephon could be S tier. I'm having so much fun with the demo, and it's not even done yet. You know, I've had to stop playing it just because I don't want to burn myself out before the, the final game comes out. But some of the stuff they're going to be adding over the course of the next couple months as they move into a quarter three release just really have me excited. Again, Distant Worlds 2 could also move up tiers with more development time and maybe even some mods. Like, I feel like the mods really drove Distant Worlds 1 to a, an S tier game as well, too. So these are some of the games that I think I mean, th those these, there's just a lot of like room for movement, I should say. I was going to try to just fumble my way through that, but there's a lot of room for movement. And I think what I'll do is at the end of the year, I might even come back. Because there will be a Distant Worlds expansion. I think Zephon will be complete. Well, Zephon should be complete. I'd like to see what Age of Wonders 4 does. I, again, I think Age of Wonders 4 could move to an S tier as well. And so there is, there's potential for movement here. And I'm eager to see where these games come out. And of course, we'll have Aura History Untold here in September. And I'd, I would like to see where that falls. So maybe we'll do another one of these soon. And maybe, maybe at the end of the year, we'll come back and revisit this exact tier. And or this, sorry, this tier maker, and and figure out where you think, where we all think these things should land. I'm going to leave the, the link for this tier maker in the description below. Feel free to do your own. And if I've missed any games that are really important, I really try to go through and remind myself which games in the last 10 years came out. And it's wild to me to think that like there hasn't been that many. So I will move this over here just a little bit. And so the... There's a, like a Punk Wars. So this is through the Explominate 4X database. And, you know, I'm, I'm already realizing that I missed Punk Wars, which I don't really think <laughs> needs to be talked about. And there's been some other games here too. Battle for Polytopia, was, it, it's a great game, but it's also more of a mobile game than anything else. You know, AI War 2 is, I don't know if it's really considered a 4X game anymore. It, it's a great game. It would be A or ST for me, S tier for me. And then we can come down. We can keep going down. There's so many games past the last 10 years, you know, that, oh, you know, Polaris Sector was a decent game, but I, I really wouldn't put that up here either. Star Ruler 2 came out less than two years. Oh, wow. No, the expansion. Sorcerer King Rivals, like some of these games. Sorcerer King Rivals is actually pretty good. I'd go B tier with that. Maybe even, maybe even more, but I, no, nah, probably B tier. So yeah, there's, we're going back to 2024. You can start to even... You know, I guess, wow, Age of Wonders 3 came out in 20, 2014. So that would be up there. Thea, I don't really know if that's a 4X game either. You know, Sorcerer Kings, I think that was a great game. But again, it wouldn't be like, I don't know if it's true 4X. It's a 4X adjacent game. There's done, it's done some things that are 4X-like. But yeah, the, the majority of that, those are like the true, the truest 4X games. Slipway is also another like 4X adjacent game. Very good, but I wouldn't really consider it a 4X game. It's Stellar Monarch 2, again, more of a grand strategy game. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Star Trek Infinite, which is hilarious that it's already been abandoned. And I mean, hilarious in that it's sad. But yeah, that's, that's it for the most part. Like we've, we've gone over the big ones. And I think that's important because, you know, like without, without really getting nitty gritty on what makes a 4X game, I'm going to just leave it at that. So let me know what you guys think. I'm eager to hear it. Seriously, let me have it. I don't care. So until then, until you know what I'll do, I'll, I'll, I'll leave, I'll, I'll, I'll certainly take into consideration everybody, everything everybody says. If you make a good argument in my next video, I will, I will highlight your argument. Okay. So thanks for watching guys. This is Rob from Explominate with the 2024 past decades worth of Forex games tier list. Hope to hear from you soon. Until next time, keep exploring.